Hi, my name's Pete from PJG Creations and welcome to another short tutorial video on learning Visual Basic with Visual Studio 2012. Today I'm going to introduce you to the Try, Catch, End Catch block. We may find that during the course of the execution of one of our programs that something happens that we didn't expect. Now, sometimes when this happens the program might crash. More often than not, we'll get a cryptic message back saying what's occurred, but it won't be particularly useful because we won't understand it. And furthermore, the program will have stopped, possibly losing data that the user has entered. This isn't ideal, so we need to overcome this. This is where the try, catch, end catch block comes in. If we jump into Visual Studio, I've created a basic WPF application with a text box and a button. We're going to allow the user to enter information into the text box and press the check button. The idea will be that the user will enter information into the text box and press the check button. Now effectively what we're going to do is convert that information to an integer and pop up a message box to say what that integer value is. Let's have a look at the code behind and make that work. First, let's define an integer. An integer in Visual Basic is a number which can hold roughly between minus two and plus two million. So it's going to be a pretty rounded storage medium for us. What we need to do is convert the text in our text box to an integer and store it in our new int integer variable. So we'll start with our int integer and we'll make that equal to our text input converted to an integer. The cint function will perform this for us. That's great. So now all we need to do is show a message box to show what they've entered. So we'll put you entered and then using concatenation our int integer. Now to be proper we need to convert that to a string. Visual Basic will do that for us anyway but this is just good convention. So let's see what it does. And here's our application. And if we type 10 in there and press check, you entered 10, just as we'd expect. So this is fantastic, exactly as we'd expect. However, this is just a text box that allows us to enter anything, even hello. Now, we can't convert hello to an integer. We know that. It doesn't have a numerical value, it's pure text. And so when we press the check button now, we get this wonderful message from Visual Studio telling us that a conversion from a string to a type integer is not valid. Obvious. That's great, but now our program's crashed and the user's information that they entered has gone. Not great. So what we need to do is, we need to use a try catch block And within this, we'll place our conversion. So what this is going to do is, the program is going to try and execute that line of code. If it fails for whatever reason, the line of code which I place in here will be executed. So what we probably want to do is pop up a message box saying there was an error or something along those lines. So that's great. So let's see what happens now when we execute the code. And here's our program. So again, if we type one, that's gonna work fine as before. And if we type hello, and now we get our message box saying there was an error. Of course, we'll still get our final message box. And as we've not put a value in there, it's gonna to default to zero. That's great, absolutely great, that's fine. The try catch block is a little bit more flexible than what I'm using here. We get an exception produced when there's an error and we can get the contents of that exception and show that to the end user. That's quite easy to achieve. All we need to do is concatenate on the exception and we'll convert it to a string. Let's try that one more time, shall we? And here's our application. We already know one works. 
So let's put hello in there again and press check. There was an error. System invalid cast exception. A conversion from string hello to type integer is not valid. Now this is the same message we saw when we didn't use our try catch block. Only now the program can recover and carry on. That's great. Now we can actually capture more than one type of exception. Now we know that that was an invalid cast exception. So instead of having just an all encompassing exception, we can catch an invalid cast exception. And there it is, invalid cast exception. So if we press start again, we go for hello again, press check, and we get the same result, invalid cast exception. So it looks like nothing's really changed. However, we've narrowed this down a little bit. We can expand on this a little bit further by forcing different sorts of exceptions. I already explained that an integer can hold anything from roughly minus 2 million to plus 2 million. If we limit that storage medium down to quite a small value, say a byte, which will limit us to a number of 255 or less, if we just add in the previous catch scenario, where we were just catching an all-encompassing exception, and then we show a message box here showing the same exception, and we also now convert to a byte rather than an integer and run the application. If we type in one, we know that works. If we type in hello, we know that gives us an invalid cast exception. But now if we type in a number of 256, which we know is one more than a byte can hold and press check, and now we get a system overflow exception instead. Now that line has been generated now by our all encompassing error. So if we stop the application again, if we add in the extra catch for an overflow exception, we can show a message box in there. We can now just remove the exception information. Let's just make this a little simpler. We could say there was an invalid cast exception here. We can say that there was an overflow exception error here. And then we can say there was a general error here. So that's fine. So let's run it again and we can see. Here's our application. One works fine. Hello. There was an invalid cast exception error. 256. There was an overflow exception error. And that's about it. And so, you can see, we're able to effectively foolproof our program, if you will. Trying to prevent our applications from crashing is always going to give the user a better experience of our application. The last thing we wanted to do is to fail and for the user to lose their information. And worse still, for the user not to know what has caused the application to fail in the first place. Of course, it's not always best to rely on a try catch block. Theoretically, what we should be doing here is preventing the text box from allowing the user to enter anything but numbers in the first place. And if we're going to limit them to byte sized storage medium, then we need to also limit the size of what they're typing in. However, it's always best to plan for the worst case and try catch will allow us to do that. And so I've been Pete of PJG Creations. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please do feel free to subscribe to my channel below. Thanks very much. Bye.